Hello and welcome to the second and last part of the multi-location access setup. In the last video, we took our fully working environment and replicated the main file share into the second branch file share and created a new login script pointing to the users folder on the second branch file share. And now we will configure the connection manager in order for the bridges on each endpoint to check which file share they should connect to for downloading and storing the different bridge components. So in the IFMC, I'll go to my file share tree, expand the system branch, right click the bridges branch and select connection manager. Now, as you can see here, I have a sample HTTP access rule, which is added by default to the IFMC in this version of the install free bridge suite 2153. Though if you are running a later version, it might not appear anymore. Okay, so let's start with creating a connection rule for my second branch file share. And for that, I will click the add new rule button here and create a new rule for the second branch. And that's exactly the name I'm going to use. And click OK. And as you can see, I got my new rule. And now let's go ahead and configure it. And the first step is, of course, setting the condition in which this rule will take effect by clicking the condition dropdown. Now, I will use the IP based condition Although I could use any other differentiator between the branches, like an Active Directory component, for instance, the second branch OU name, or even the domain condition if I'm using a different domain name for each branch. Though for that, you must enable multiple domains in the IFMC. But the reason I'm using the IP address space condition is because of its flexibility since using the IP will make sure that your users will connect to the nearest file share even if they roam between branches because their IP will always indicate their location. So now my new condition is if the IP address equals. And as you may remember, my machine that represents the second branch endpoint was the Windows 7 and its IP address is 10.10.10.50. So I'll give the condition a range between 10, 10, 10, 49 and 10, 10, 10, 51. And now let's go to the configurations tab and set the file share path. So I'll scroll all the way down. And at this point, I basically have two options depending on whether I've decided to synchronize the entire file share or only the AODs, data, engines, and system folders under the users folder. Now for this demo, I will configure the different elements according to the partial synchronization, which includes only the four folders and not the entire file share. And in a minute, I'll explain what to do if you have implemented a full synchronization. So I'll check the alternative file share path variable to unlock it and I'll type the path to my second branch file server. Now, in my case, I'm using a simple computer name, but in your case, if you're using DFS, for instance, you should input your DFS namespace instead. If, on the other hand, I had the full synchronization on, then I would input my DFS namespace in the file share path variable itself and not in the alternative file share path, which in that case should remain empty. And now let's go on and change other paths for other elements. So the second branch users will always use their local file servers. So I'll copy my computer name and change the self provisioning path user data file share path and the server events folder. Okay, I'll click the save button and let's go on and add another rule this time for my main branch. So I'll click the add new rule button again. 
Name the rule main branch. Click OK. And I've got my new rule. So I'll go to the conditions drop down, select IP address again. And since my main branch demo endpoints IP is 10.10.10.55, I'll type in a range from 10.10.10.54 10, 10, 10, to 10.10.10.56. 10, 10, 10, now, all these paths here, while locked, inherit their value from the bridge properties. So I don't need to change anything in particular in regards to the paths, including the events folder which we have changed in the previous rule. On the other hand, I can change any other variable I wish to, for instance create different non-domain configurations or any other of the myriad options which might apply to my environment. And remember that whatever I leave unchanged which is grayed out will inherit its configuration from the regular bridge properties. So, I'll click the save button to save my rule. And now I have a problem. Because if you can remember, the connection manager checks the rules from top to bottom. And the first condition that returns a true will be applied. So, it'll start with the HTTP access rule. Go on to the second branch rule. And end up in the main branch rule. And if none return a true, then the regular bridge properties will be applied. Now, if you look at the HTTP access rule, you can see that the rules condition is if domain does not equal XYZ. And unless your domain name is actually XYZ, this condition will return a true and apply an HTTP path to the file share, which is a problem because you probably don't have one yet. So what I'll do next is I'll use the down button up here and move the HTTP access rule to the bottom of the list. And because most of my users are in the main branch, I'll put the main branch at the top of the list, which will shorten the time it takes to the connection manager to check the conditions. But now you will see that the HTTP access rule creates a new problem which originates from the fact that I have two network adapters on each endpoint. Now, if you remember, the connection manager runs a check against each adapter found on the endpoint, and in my case, each adapter has a different IP. This means that my IP-based rules will return a true only per one adapter, and since the HTTP access rule will also return a true, I will have two conflicting configurations, one associated with my IP address rules and one with the HTTP access rule. And to overcome configuration conflicts between adapters, we use the grade variable. Now, since in my case the branch's conditions are more important than the HTTP rule, I'll make sure branch's configuration will win over any other rule. So first, I'll set my main branch rule grade to 100, which will make it the strongest of all rules, and click Save. And I'll change the second branch rule grade to 90, which will make it the second strongest, and click Save again. And I'll leave my HTTP access rule grade at its default zero, which will make it the weakest of them all. And now, since the main and second branch grades are larger than the HTTP access rule grade, the main and second branch rules will win over the HTTP access rule in case of a conflict. And now, let's have a look at my endpoints to see how it works and how the bridge decides which file share it should connect to. So, first, let's log into my XP machine, which represents endpoints in my main branch. And I'll also use a user found in my domain controllers, meaning the logon script that will be used will be the one pointing to the user's subfolder on my main branch file share. And you just saw the logon script flash there for a second. And you can see the bridge virtual client is now running and connecting to the file share. 
And now I'm going to show you an important tool in regards to the connection manager, usually used for debugging problems and for support issues. So I'll right click the bridge virtual client and select about. And if I'll double click the line that indicates the main path, you can see a screen that gives me a detailed list of what the connection manager has checked and which of the rules returned a true and was implemented. And you can see that for the first adapter, the main branch rule returned a false according to its IP address, and so did the second branch rule for the same reason. But you can see that the HTTP access rule returned a true because my domain name does not equal XYZ. And down here in the second adapter section, the main branch rule returned a true because the IP address fits into the IP address range and the rest of the rules were not checked, again since the rules are checked from top to bottom and once a rule returns a true, the rest of the rules are not checked. And now you can see I have two configuration rules which both returned a true. But since the main branch rule had a higher grade level, it was the one that was implemented as you can see in this line here. And now let's take a look at my Windows 7 machine, which represents an endpoint in my second branch. And I'll log in under the user named second branch, which of course has his own logon script pointing to the user subfolder on the second branch file server. And you can see the logon script is running and the bridge virtual client was launched and it's connecting to the file share. So let's click the about button again. And again, you can see the connection managers flow starting in the first adapter. And this time you can see the main branch returned a false. And according to the IP address, the second branch returned a true. And under the second adapter, you can see again the HTTP access rule returned a true. But again, the configuration that was implemented was the second branch because of its higher grade level. So, this concludes this section of the advanced connection setup. And now you can choose to add other connection scenarios by clicking the boxes in this diagram. Thank you all for watching.